Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 62. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? And we have a fun episode today. We're going to be taking a look at the coolest problems that hit 9th edition. <laughs> I don't want them to sound negative because some of these are wildly entertaining to me. They're definitely wildly entertaining, but they're also not balanced in any way. So we're going to look at 9th edition's problem children throughout the edition and dissect what happened and how it was resolved. Sounds good. Before we get started, it's worth noting that we could have picked... 15 different events, and I'm sure your favorite probably got missed. But to me, these are the four horsemen of, like, the oopsie moments and rules. We're not going to count overarching problems like, Right. The Tyranids Codex had way too good rules at the time, or Admech on launch was way better than everything else that had a Codex, or Harlequins needed 15 nerfs to be properly balanced in high-end competitive play. Yeah, those are more encompassing issues. Yeah, it's boring, that's that's not what we're here for. We're here for the crazy, unexpected things that took GW by storm on accident. Yeah, these are the things that are fun. Like you said, there's a bit of like, oh, that's kind of neat that that happened. Just an overtuned codex is just boring. Yeah, I mean, there is some interesting things about how it was solved or fixed or whatever, but these are more fun. <laughs> So these are the four horsemen of ninth edition. Okay, so I guess we'll just kind of get right into it. Let's start with orcs. Let's hear how uh, one of your factions became a problem child. Yeah, there's some very cool vehicles in orcs, and they've always been very fun and like a thematic thing. And uh, they became point costed quite a bit under what they should have, along with just how ninth edition worked and how efficient things just generally were. And most importantly of all, they changed how the unit worked. Yes. Because it used to be a maximum of one per unit. And I believe there was a well-meaning attempt by GW with the new Orc Codex to make it a little more fluid for how you could put your buggies into detachments with how detachments had changed with 9th edition. It was very awkward to try to run all your different buggies in one list. You couldn't really fit, you know, like three or six of them in a patrol or a battalion. There was a lot of problems problems of like you were punished to doing that kind of thing like so you couldn't have the fun thematic junkyard vehicle list yeah because all your vehicles were in the fast attack slot like your war bikes and all that yep or they were in your heavy support slot or whatever so they tried to do a way where you could squadron up your buggies yep which is in hindsight a terrible idea <laughs> <laughs> it was a fine idea. The problem was they never expected someone to own nine copies of a single buggy, since the cap in 8th edition was you could have three of any one type. And that makes sense, except for the fact that then, like, obviously orc players have more than three, especially if that's the part of the army that they enjoy. And if they enjoy it, they're going to bring as many as they can. So it was very quickly found out that, like, yeah, bring nine of them, and it's actually really strong. Not only is it like kind of a meme fun list that I put together, but like it's just smashing everybody. So, uh, yeah, that just became the standard. Yeah, because you could make them, the Rucka Truck Squig Buggy was, like, the worst offender, because you could make its main weapon, which fired out of line of sight. This is one of the many things that caused the line of sight nerf. You could have it hit on fours instead of fives, because technically it was a grot firing it. Yeah, the uh, grot gunner for the heavy squig launcher. And you could make it where you have a dock jet kill something to trigger the plus one to hit for your whole army for the rest of the shooting phase. So even if your opponent was behind dense cover, you still got that four up because you had two different plus ones and you, you were always capped to only hitting on fours. But because of it stacking like that, there was no way to get you back to fives for the most part because you'd have to stack two minuses to get back there. Yeah, and just generally orcs are balanced around the fact that they have such poor accuracy. That, like, when they don't have complete garbage accuracy, the amount of damage that they can put out is just very wild. Yeah, like, the Squig Launcher is 2d6 attacks at 5 minus 2, 2, and you can hit essentially anything on the board because you've got a 10-inch move, a 36-inch range, and ignore line of sight. 
Yeah. And the problems continued on that, like, the Rucka Truck Squig Buggy had good move. It had decent melee, actually. Like, the saw blades did damage. Yeah, you still got four attacks with the damn things, and you hit on fours anyway. Yeah, and, like, flat two damage. So, like, they're just a strong unit, especially when you're able to field that many of them, and they just cover for each other. The point costs didn't help in that, like, they're cheap, (laughs) so you can actually run them without, like, completely giving up on the actual victory point objectives type thing, instead of just like, oh, I'm just gonna shoot them all off the battlefield. Well, no, they still had the rest of their list to actually win in victory points. Yeah, essentially you were able to run what was called buggy spam, where you ran, like, nine of this, and then nine of one of the other Speed Freak models, and then you would run, like, a pair of Daka jets, and just fill out the rest of your list with whatever, and just blow your opponent off the board on like turn one or turn two yeah and this was pre uh plane nerf type stuff so like orcs got a lot of the fun nerfs happening that they weren't the only offenders of any of these admech was as bad with the planes we were getting harpies coming from tyranids and there was all sorts of issues the new tau codex was coming out with their indirect fire missile launchers and everything else there were other people to blame for some of these but the buggies got their own change that actually got revised a couple times the modern version is when mustering an orc army it cannot include more than three of any of the following models and then it lists all of the speed freaks units and that's the correct way to do it because you get the you can still squad to three but you're not cheating on bringing more than three of the model exactly because again they were trying to be kind with the way the codex was written but they hadn't thought of the fact that psycho orc players would just go out and buy triple the number of this single model kit to run 18 of them in a single list possibly they didn't realize how good it was i could understand that but like we're orc players green tide like we max out whatever we can just because it's fun it is very possible that they only have three of each painted up in the studio (laughs) for doing beta testing maybe because like i've never seen them post like a giant army picture of more than that amount like i've seen them post multiple of the same one but it's very possible they never even considered someone would buy more than three of that it is possible i suppose but the fix that we got to of you know you can't have more than three of each of the following models and then there's the list of them i like it it fixes the problems it doesn't make these units bad it just makes them fair and it forces you into a more balanced list but you can still have your fun with it all right the next one is a little more modern oh i like this one this is one we've talked about in the past on the show and my opinions on the solution this is for demons yeah this is for the flamers of zinch now known as the pew pews of zinch <laughs> Flamers were not okay in any way. No, they weren't. They were undercosted. They had stat lines that were actually very impressive. They went down in points and went up to three wounds while improving their invulnerable save by one. Yeah, and the fact that you could soup them easily because of how demons is all working made it just like, okay, yeah, you just take them. It was a problem. It was rough. It was a bad time because you have to remember, these were 12-inch fly models. Models. Oh, yeah. They shot at strength five, AP minus two, damage one, but their shot count was assault D6 plus three. You could advance your 12 inch <laughs> fly without an issue because it was also auto hitting. Yep. So there was no downside for that. So you could just advance and shoot at full power. You would average six and a half, five minus two, one shots per flamer in the squad, and you could just delete anything. Yeah. And like, because the wounds went up as well, like it wasn't a complete trade piece where it was like, oh, they, they're going to run up and delete something, but I'll be easy to just shoot them off and then I won't have to worry about it anymore. Now you had to actually commit to dealing with them a bit. Yeah. Because with our last codex, I own a lot of flamers. I was able to run <laughs> the max flamer count immediately because I just own that many flamers. It's dumb. They were bad. Like, I ran them because I like flamers. Right. They went way up in the amount of shots they could do. They went up in AP. They became more defensive. They kept all their move. I can only assume no one tested flamers during the actual beta testing process. 
I do wonder if it was just one of those like general things where like they didn't pinpoint why things were happening because the rest of the codex honestly is like not a particularly impressive thing. This is a little bit off subject, but we got a ton of leaks about the demon codex that all turned out to be very, very true. Right. In those leaks, they had mentioned that apparently in beta testing, Nurgle was like the second coming. It was horrendous. Nothing could defeat it. They had to do hyper nerfs to Nurgle in the last last second before the codex went out so it's very possible no one even looked at the other gods and they they just ended up nerfing nurgle and went oh thank god we dodged that bullet yeah and then we ended up with flamers and like i said one of the biggest problems with them is just they're easy to soup into other lists as well so it's not just like oh we have to worry about demons well no you have to worry about flamers and everybody else that can bring the flamers as well Yeah, you weren't just able to run them in the best demons list, you were able to run them in the best every Chaos Army list. And every Chaos Army, when it won a tournament, started looking like 18 flamers plus whatever's in that army. Whatever flavor you wanted to put in that flamers list, essentially. (laughs) The most screwed up one I saw when I knew flamers were absolutely doomed was like three weeks into that meta when there was a death guard list that got like first or second or something and they brought death guard with flamers which destroys the death guard army rules so you lose all your rules but who cares but who cares because flamers are better than playing death guard because i have flamers and i just wanted to bring a bit of flavor from the death guard it doesn't matter if they have rules or not it's fine that was the list that I remember had Aramon in a detachment on his own or something <laughs> crazy. So he had no rules. And then the Flamers were in their detachment with like a little HQ of some type. And then the rest was Death Guard. And it, it was just a mess. And it was a sign of how far gone Flamers were. Yeah, so they did fix it. They fixed it by, and here's the quote, delete the following ability from the flickering flames weapon found on the flamer's data sheet. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, that attack automatically hits the target. So they made flamers, the unit that is named flamers, not do the flamer ability. Yeah, the auto hit thing. Just delete it. This is not the solution I enjoyed, and I still think this was the wrong solution to this problem. I agree with you. I just said get rid of the plus three attacks every one of them gets, and you ended up doing less damage in the shooting phase than their solution, especially because it made them now combo with a bunch of non-bows that were in the codex to begin with, so now they can get two up to hit, which means they do barely any less damage than they did before. Yeah. The only silver lining is, like, they don't auto-hit on Overwatch, but it would have been better to just take away all of those plus shots and add in a also demon thing flamers can't overwatch and you can flavor it as a new ability. Wow, what a fun ability, Brad. I, we're allowed to have downside abilities. It's chaos. That's true. It's true. But yeah, this was definitely a fix that I don't agree with. Like the orc one nailed it. It still lets you do the thing. It's worth noting that was not the first iteration of that orc fix. That's true. The eventual fix was the perfect one. But before that, there was some like you could take them, but only take one squad of each. So they became like legendary squads or whatever. It was very weird. There was a time that I didn't actually know what current rules were. But what we ended up with makes good logical sense. What we ended up with at the moment, at least for the Chaos Demon Flamers doesn't make any sense. Well, there's supposed to be a data slate soon, so I'm sure it will come out between us recording this and the episode airing so that we can be perfectly wrong on timing. Yeah, that will be absolutely hilarious. So let's move on to the next one then. (laughs) So our third horseman, it's the Votan Judgment Tokens. The hilarious math that got called while they were still being spoiled like on the Warcom articles and people started doing math based off other abilities we had in the edition that were problem children. And it quickly became apparent that these were going to be an issue. So Eric can read you what the ability was. This is all around the whole judgment tokens being given to stuff and like, I don't know, I'm not going to read the entire thing because it's, there's a lot of it, but 
the original ending paragraph essentially said, Note, if an attack automatically wounds the target as a result of this ability, then for the purposes of any other rules that are triggered on a particular wound roll, that attack is considered to have been made with an unmodified wound roll of 6. Basically, if you did the things with the judgment, you just get an auto 6. Yeah, and this is another one we've talked about on the show before. I don't even want to laugh at GW that much for this one because I was so proud of them for finally realizing they were writing all these non-bows in, in these codices. So you had like auto hit on six and then a weapon that cared about your wound roll, stuff like that in several codexes throughout the edition. And then you get to Votan and they finally went, wait a second, we'll just make it so the auto hit counts as the wound roll so you get the trigger and you don't have that feel bad moment. Fantastic. Except they chose it on like the most overpowered combo of abilities of you could auto hit on a four up and you your six's ability was absolutely insane on half the weapons in your army. Yeah, and it wasn't particularly difficult to like move those tokens around and stuff like that. So it wasn't just like a one time thing of like, oh, you get this and you delete a unit. No, it just like bounces around and you're just like, yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> well, they just build up. They don't even bounce around. They never leave. And it became very clear that the math was not good. <laughs> Just basic napkin paper math was like, wow, this is just insane. I'm not particularly happy with how they solved it because, like you said, the original intent was, okay, let's not make the codex fight itself. Yeah, I think the actual correct answer is one they couldn't have gotten away with without pissing off more people, though, yeah. which would have been like judgment tokens cap at one. Right. Because the auto wounding on a four up to hit is insane. But at the same time, I get like you want the judgment tokens to be like... They were the defining characteristic, yeah. Yeah, a building up of, oh, you're getting in real trouble now <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. It is very likely the 10th edition index will reset the power level on Votan's judgment token system or just remove it entirely for, you know, a judgment ability instead or whatever they'll re-theme it as that will not be like this at all. Yeah, so the solution that they have right now, at least, is changing always to never. I give them props for how hilarious a single word change is. Yeah, and and <laughs> it, it's, it's technically always because... Because, like, the previous one was just, like, this happens. So, like, it was implied, like, it always just happens. And now there's just a single word, never, is in that. So that attack is never considered to have been made with an unmodified wound roll six. Very clean. Very efficient. <laughs> a single word <laughs> changed an entire codex. But it does have some feel bads now, so I get it. I appreciate that they did it before you could buy everything. Yes. That was one that I gave them props for. It's a risky play as a company to do that, to admit you're wrong before you sell the product to the customer. Usually you wait until after they've had it for 32 days, and then you go, great, we were wrong. Yeah. No take backs. Yeah, <laughs> no returns. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it does make sense. Like, the math was just so egregious and so obvious once it was pointed out. It is nice that they actually did something and we didn't have to deal with it just ruining tournaments and play. But, yeah, I think it works out okay. Judgment tokens still feel judgment token-y. It's just there's a bit of a nombo. Okay, that sucks, but... We can move on to our last horseman. We have to go into the Wayback Machine to early in the edition. Yeah. So the Drakari Codex came out, and as a Covens player, I got to be on the forefront of an absolutely disgusting and totally wrong uh, <laughs> rule. <laughs> This was the bane of one of our crusades we did. I still, like, it feels like you played it wrong. You know, like, it just doesn't feel like it was even possible. But walk us through it. Okay, so first for the original... You could pick your sub-faction, and one of them, which was a holdover from last edition, was changed slightly, which is Dark Technomancers. When the codex came out, it read, Each time this obsession is selected to shoot, you can choose to enhance any or all ranged weapons models in that unit are equipped with. If you do so, until the end of phase, each time an attack is made with an enhanced weapon, add one to that attack's wound roll and one to the damage characteristic of that attack. But that attack's hit cannot be re-rolled. If any unmodified hit rolls of one were made with attacks with the enhanced weapon, the bearer's unit suffers one mortal wound after shooting with this weapon. If the bearer is a vehicle or a monster, it suffers D3 instead. 
Okay, so it adds one to wound and damage rolls. Cool, but you can't reroll hits, and if you fuck up, you take mortals. Seems fair. And it's a play on how it worked last edition, except they changed to the hit roll. And uh, this is for Covens, and Covens have liquefier guns, which is one of our, like, (laughs) defining characteristics. They're very powerful flamer equivalents. Yeah. So it's a 12-inch flamer with assault D6, strength 4, AP minus 2, 1 damage only, thankfully. But it's got the flamer ability that Pew Pews of Zinch no longer have. (laughs) Of each time an attack is made with this weapon, that attack automatically hits the target. So you don't roll a hit roll, so you can't ever mortal wound yourself. Yeah. So Dark Technomancers has no downside, and just makes this be strength four with plus one to wound, so you wound a space marine on threes, and then it just flat out deletes out a space marine every time they fail their save roll at AP minus two. Oh, I just... (laughs) You don't have to roll the hit roll, so you're hitting D6 shots per one that you play you can run two of them in a five-man squad of racks you can put one on each of your grotesques it worked out to a lot of flamers you know i think there might be a problem with gw's ability to balance flamers you know things that automatically hit they might just not understand that (laughs) it seems to have been a running theme of the edition (laughs) just a bit and i do hate the fact that you you love flamers, like, even ignoring, like... There's a reason I owned everything to play these two things. Like, both of my armies that are on the Four Horsemen list here. Before the thing occurred, I was ready for it, unknowing to myself, because flamers are the coolest thing that you can do. Yeah, and now I just have, like, a visceral reaction against <laughs> flamers because of this, of, like, you love it so much that you just had it, and it's like... And then it was broken. <laughs> fuck you (laughs) so yeah this was uh this was a fun one so yeah the fix was rather simplistic liquefier guns and twin liquefier guns can never be enhanced was added to (laughs) dark technomancers (laughs) just no (laughs) yeah it it was a simple solution It was. And Drakari did have several other nerfs over the course of their existence. Some of them have been undone over time and all that. They're like Admech in that way, where that part's not that fun to talk about. It's more, this was especially egregious. It was by far the first and strongest thing to come out of that codex. And then everything else followed suit after this got wiped out in like one patch change. Yeah, and it did feel wrong how you were using it. It was just like, no, this just bring out the rule book kind of thing. Like, that's not right. You're doing something wrong. And I mean, you weren't, but it took a while for you to be wrong, <laughs> to, to retroactively be wrong kind of thing. I racked up a lot of points in that crusade we ran. Yeah. It kind of sucks that, like, they just killed it, you know? There was probably a more elegant solution, but to be honest, this was right when things were starting to go downhill PR-wise with the balance of ninth and Admech and this were causing issues, and I get why they just put a bullet in it. And it's probably still a better change than the Demon's Flamers, because, like, they're still liquefier guns are still liquefier guns. You just can't combo with them. But overall, these were four hilarious moments to witness. I don't think any of these caught anyone off guard when they got nerfed. It was pretty well assumed every one of them was getting nerfed. The only one that really, I think, caught anyone off guard was Votan because of how soon it happened. Yeah, it wasn't that it was happening. It was that it happened as fast and encompassing as it was. It wasn't one of those where it was like, oh, let's uh, wait and see after they buy it kind of thing. Yeah, there's more interesting ones like this, but I think these are the four fun ones that come to mind immediately. Yeah, there's a lot of fun ones throughout the edition, as long as you've got a good sense of humor for the broken things that have occurred. There was the time where, for a short period at least, Silent King was core, thus buffing himself. That was dumb. It was very dumb. There's also the Grey Knights that didn't have capped mortal wounds for their rapiers. Oh yeah, so you could run rapiers and do like a billion mortals. Yeah, I mean like it's still a good decision even though it's capped but like oh man that was dumb <laughs> and in Drakari, we had like the 40 wound witch or whatever you could pull off <laughs> where you had razor blades and the way explodes worked there's all sorts of things that got changed over the edition as they found these weird corner cases and i'm sure we will find things in 10th at some point
Oh, I absolutely look forward to the first Flamers that fail. No, I think Flamers, they'll overcorrect. Flamers will be really bad all through 10. It'll be something else that's the problem child. (laughs) Okay. And then in 11th or whatever, they'll be like, you know, no one played Flamers at all last edition. Let's make (laughs) Flamers good this time. (laughs) Flamers are so cool. I don't understand why nobody plays them. I guess we're just going to have to buff them. (laughs) The circle of life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Looking forward to my buggy spam coming back again. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> At least you don't own an illegal number of them, so you're fine. I will be ready. I will be. I know it's going to happen someday. All right, but we just wanted to walk you through these great four moments. If you have others, feel free to share them. I'm sure I could list another half dozen, but it's more of a fun thing, especially for people who didn't pay attention too much to either competitive play or just mash play, however you want to think of it. I know a lot of the more casual crowd might not have known how hilariously offensive some of these combos were when they came out. Yeah, and I mean, we're coming up on a new edition, so it's one of those that like, when something goes wrong in balance in the new edition and they fix it well it's not the first time (laughs) and it's not going to be the last you can look back on every edition before this one and see people making lists of the exact same type of stuff it will never go away there will always be something new to break and i'm looking forward to it (laughs) and if you liked it don't be shy about doing some youtube pleasantries for us it helps us out all right but that does it for this week though so let's get out of here sounds good